humans, we all love to make lists. So you have the richest person, the fastest athletes, and so on. And it's no different for the animal kingdom. The biggest animals, the biggest whales, the most dangerous snakes. There's a thing called Shark Week. You know, we love these sorts of things. But if you were to ask me um, to draw up a list of what I think are the most interesting species, it doesn't look quite as dramatic. It's a bit more unassuming, like these guys here. So you might be a bit familiar with, say, the bat species there, but the rest of them are just a bit meh. What are they about? Well, I think these are some of the most fascinating creatures alive. And I'm going to try to convince you by the end of it that we should be really focusing in and trying to understand what the hell these guys are up to. So on the top is the bat species. It's to represent uh, microbats in particular. These are the guys that echolocate and live around here. Just underneath that is a species called the human fish. It's not a human, and it's not a fish. <laughs> it's actually an amphibian that lives in cave systems over in Eastern Europe. Um, beside that on the bottom is the naked mole rat. Um, this this lovely looking beastie was best described by a colleague of mine as a sausage with teeth. <laughs> and I think I agree. But these are incredibly strange animals. They live under the ground. They have a social system more like ants than any other mammal. And above that is another unusual species. It's the Mexican mole lizard. It is a lizard. It does live in Mexico, but it's not a mole. But better than the human fish. And this has no back legs and, again, lost its pigment and is quite strange. The only thing they all have in common, actually, they don't get on the big list, is that they were all nominated as the ugliest animal last year. Even here, they failed. They lost to this guy. <laughs> so why am I interested in, in a bunch of species who are literally a bunch of losers? They can't even win an ugly competition. Why bother? Well, Despite their complete lack of competitiveness in any form, they might actually hold some of the secrets to the biggest challenges facing everybody in this room, and in fact, everybody alive, and that's ageing. So I don't need to tell you what a big problem ageing is and how difficult it is to, um, to approach it. In fact, on the way in this morning, uh, in my email box, pops open the latest issue of Science, and a very simple question is, well, why do we age? And it's really surprising. We still know very little about why we age and why some things actually age faster than others, in particular, animals. So that's a very good way to just try to understand why anything ages at all, is to look at animals and the massive variation we see there. So just to give you a little bit of a taste of this variation, we'll start off with the, the shortest living vertebrate we know. And this is the seven-figure pygmy goby. Now, this little creature only lives for 59 days. I like to think it's called a seven-figure pygmy gomi, even though I have no idea why it's called that, because it can express its maximum lifespan in seconds with seven figures. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> think about that. This creature has to be born, grow, reproduce in 59 days. It has an average daily mortality rate of up to 8%. Think about getting out of bed this morning and have an 8% chance of not being eaten by the end of the day. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Right up on the other end of the scale, you have things that live really long. So we know whales, they, they live really, really long. However, we didn't even realize how long they live until 2007, when an individual was found, uh, a bowhead whale in particular, with a harpoon still lodged in its back. However, when they looked at it, they realized these harpoons haven't been used since the 1800s. So this individual was actually harpooned way, way back, and they estimated that that individual must be at least 211 years old and still living. So it's an incredible age. If we really, really, really want to push the boundaries with the jump out of the animals and look at something like the bristle cone pine, now this, this absolutely beats up anything, any animals living and can live up to 5,000 years for one individual. Think about that. This individual is well on its way to mature them before the pyramids were even built. So an absolutely incredible thing. <laughs> In the middle, there's us. So if you have a good, healthy diet, we can live pretty long too, but we can't match any of these guys. So that leads to the question, OK, there's this humongous variation in how long different things live. And I find that really interesting, because if we know why they live for different ages, well, then we can try to figure out what is behind ageing. Um, so where does 
all my oddballs come back into this? Well, you might have noticed between the very short uh, species list I gave you already, that big things tend to live longer than small things. Makes sense. That's pretty much one of the only things we really are sure of when it comes to explaining which animals live longer than others. These guys, they're not too big, they're actually pretty small, but for their size, if you give them a fair whack at comparing them to something similar, they actually out, they're extraordinary. They, they really do uh, shine in this capacity. So if we take something that's a little bit more similar to them in size, so take a mouse, mouse lives two, three years, four maximum for say a house mouse. Um, we compare that to say, a bat. In particular, most bats uh, can live past 20 years, but Brandt's bat, was, uh, one individual, was found to live for 41 years. That's an order of magnitude greater than the mouse. Likewise, the naked mole rat can live up to 31 years, so they're the same size, yet they're living orders of magnitude longer. Why? That's an incredible thing, incredible feat. And not surprisingly, as scientists, we've been jumping on these species, and particularly these two species. So right here in UCD, there's a research team looking specifically at bats to figure out where in that genome, what is it that makes them do this? How can they get around aging like other animals can't? And the same for the naked mole rat. But we kind of jumped the gun a little bit. So we, we want to figure out how they do it. We still have very little idea of why they do it. What is it about these animals that make them live so long? It's not body size, they're pretty small. So th there's something very unusual going on there. Um, and so this is where I come in. This is the kind of research I love to do. I want to figure out that. And one of the ways as we do it is we come up with some ideas. One of the best ideas around right now is that basically they're very good at getting away from these big dangerous predators. <laughs> so you've seen a lot of ugly species. I thought I'd balance it out with a nice little cuddly predator. So the idea is basically, if you're good at getting away from dangerous situations, such as your predators, you're probably going to live longer. Because if you're a mouse and you die by the age four, you, evolution never even gets the chance to select for traits that reduce problems with aging. So for example, a mouse is never going to be worried about cancer as much as it's going to be worried about cats. <laughs> but the naked mole rat and the bats, they don't have to worry about cats. The naked mole rats live under these tunnel systems that are really well protected, and bats can simply fly away. And so they live longer naturally, and selection lets them live longer again. Longevity beget longevity. And this is great. So we tested out these theories. So in particular, looking at the naked mole rat, we go, OK, well, is this true? We'll get loads of data on how long all these different animals live, take account for how big they are, and then see, well, do things that live under the ground live longer? Do things that fly live longer? And that's kind of what we found. And we found that, for example, things that live in trees, underground, and can fly, live far, far longer for their body size than expected. And we also find that some of the genes associated with these um, cancer suppressant uh, abilities, say, for example, in the naked mole rat, are also associated with traits uh, associated with their lifestyle. So for example, in the naked mole rat, the molecules, the genes, uh, um, that produce the molecules associated with suppressing cancer are very closely associated to their stretchy skin. Now, that's not the best superhero ability in the world, but it's really useful if you live under the ground. It also makes you look like a sausage with teeth, but there you go. You win some, you lose some. And so that would be really useful if this was actually true, because then we can bring all our other friends, or all our other oddballs can come over, and we can say, well, do we expect to see the same types of things in these species, or have they solved aging in a different way? But it at least gives us another way of looking at it. So evolution might have so solved these problems again and again in very different species. But however, this is still on the fence. Peop this is still a very difficult thing to know. Some studies actually show, no, things that, don't live, that do live underground don't really live that much longer. There might be other traits, such as living in social groups. So this is what I want to do, and what the research uh, I am involved with is in gathering not just more information, but better information. Species aren't just a number about how long they live. All sorts of other interesting things are going on there. Where, where is their mortality rate the highest? W when do they reproduce? And all these things. And by developing these better, more complex models, we can try to figure out what is it really driving 
the evolution of these really odd species and their amazing ability to circumnavigate uh, aging. So I think, well, these guys are not always on the top of the list in the Guinness Book of Records or whatever, or even win ugly awards. If we can understand what makes them so odd and so special, we can go a long way to understanding how aging works and better understand how to fix it ourselves. Thank you.